In this video we're going to look at SALT, which is a configuration management system for servers similar to Chef, Puppet, and Ansible. It's made a lot of waves recently in the Django community, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at it and how to use it in the next few videos over SALT. We're going to go from today, which is a very base introduction into connecting a master and a minion server, and then in the next video we're going to discuss how to use a pillar to do custom configuration while having unique and item potent salt states. And then in the third video we're going to actually show how to combine all that together and do production pushes with salt. So to move on and actually get started with this, we currently have two VirtualBox servers running. They're both running Ubuntu 14.04 and they don't have anything installed on them yet. They are base installation, so all we have to do is start like we normally would at getting a configuration management system going. The absolute first thing that we need to do is we need to add the salt repository to install Ubuntu packages on our servers, and that's actually fairly easy because we're just going to add a custom PPA both to the master server, which you can see as Ubuntu at master is that, and I'm running it in a TMUX session so we can flip back and forth. Currently SSH'd into both. And then we're going to switch over to our Web01 and do the exact same command there using our PPA there. And then from there we're going to go ahead and switch back to our master and install the salt master daemon. We're also going to jump over to our web01 and install the minion as well. And while these are going, basically the master is the master configuration server. It holds your salt scripts and your pillar and is the one place where all these servers will connect to to get their information of what should be installed in them. It is basically the central location you go to if you want to work on any of your other servers. One of the great things about SALT is not only does it allow you to do configurations through SALT scripts, but also allows you to execute commands on other servers without actually having to SSH into them. And we're, we'll get into that particular piece in the third part of this series. Today we're just going to again talk about the master and the minion. Once we have the master and the minion installed, we can actually take a look at our master and see, make sure the salt master service is running. And we see it is running on process 2544. We can also do a PSAUX to see that salt master is also running. The next thing we want to do is we want to connect our minion, which is, if you haven't figured out, the minion is the server that's going to have stuff done to it and it connects to a master. So we're going to want to connect our minion to our master. First thing that we need to do is we need to list all of the salt keys because salt uses its own connection protocol. What you do is you have your minion communicate with your master and then you can accept or reject keys. In this case, we can list all of our keys. If we'll do a sudo salt key with a dash capital L, it lists out every single key that the master is aware of. In this case, the master is aware of no keys at all. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get the IP address of this master. And then we want to go over to our minion and we're going to edit our hosts file to say, hey, this IP address of this other server should be known as salt because the salt minion looks for a DNS record of salt and the quickest way to do that for most servers is to edit the host file to say hey salt is at this IP address. You can also go into Etsy salt minion into the config and actually go ahead and set the IP address directly there but editing the host file makes it a little more universal. And then after we do that, we want to restart our minion. That's simple enough. So now if we do our listing of our keys, we'll see that we have zero accepted keys and one unaccepted key of web01. And then we'll go ahead and accept that by saying, hey, we're going to accept web01. And it does its communication back and forth. And then finally prompts us to accept it. We confirm it by hitting yes. And then we can do a list again 
and we see that we have accepted Web01. One of the ways you can communicate back and forth between what is the name of the minion versus the master is based on the host name. In Etsy host name, whatever that name is, if it's unique, then Salt will use that as its identifying mark. If it's not unique, then Salt will generate one for you and put a minion underscore ID file inside of the Etsy Salt minion folder. So moving right along, if you want to test and see what servers you have connected to your minion, without and not just trust the keys you can actually use a command of sudo salt star test dot ping this goes out and it pings all of the servers that are connected to the salt master and then returns whether it truly pings in and gets a response back or not with this let's go ahead and break down some of what's happening in this command what we're doing is we're doing a sudo we use sudo because every salt thing has to run as root because it's actually changing things on servers Salt is the overall command and the application that we're running. And then we put star, it means every single server on the system. Here you can actually say web01 and it will do just web01. You could do web02, web03, or any other server that you have specifically set up. So now that we actually have our master and our minion talking back and forth to each other, let's actually go ahead and install something on our minion. To do this, salt has some basic conventions. In the slash serve folder, you'll have a pillar folder and a salt folder. Again, pillars will cover in the next episode. So, but we're gonna go ahead and create our salt folder and our pillar folder. And then we're going to live inside of our salt folder. And now we need to create a top.sls file. And inside of that, we're going to say base at the very top. And that's where everything starts from. On the next line, you're going to give it a couple spaces and then put in quotes web01. This is targeting the web01 server that is connected to our master. And so anything under web01 that's indented under that is something that's going to happen. From there, we're going to do a hyphen Postgres SQL. And then what we're saying is that when we run our salt, that we're going to say, hey, web01, we want you to call the PostgreSQL salt script and execute that on web01. So let's go ahead and jump back for a second, actually look at this file, this top.sls. SLS is the extension for salt, and the actual language or configuration that it uses is a YAML file. But it actually goes another step further and is a YAML Jenja file. So the first thing it does is it actually compiles all the Jinja and converts it into a YAML format. And then from YAML, it could actually converts it into pure Python code. In this case, we're creating a base dictionary with a dictionary under that with the key of web01. And then inside of that, we're basically creating a list. Which brings me to a point where you should look at the SALT documentation to get an idea of the data structures that you can develop using YAML files. However, at the same time, you can write a Python script and import SALT into your Python script and do this all using Python. So now that we understand that, let's just recap that we're doing the base. So the first thing that's run when we call our salt thing is we're gonna say, hey, let's go get web01 and let's run the Postgres SQL salt script. So that we know that's gonna happen. Let's actually see about what this Postgres SQL salt script is all about. There's actually a couple of ways to do this. We can either make a Postgres SQL.sls file or we can create a Postgres SQL folder with an init.sls. I personally think this is more of a taste thing than anything else. So I generally go with the PostgreSQL folder and go with init.sls. So let's go ahead and open up our init.sls file in our Postgres folder and start writing some YAML. We're going to start with the very top of PostgreSQL. Then we're gonna say that, hey, we want the package of PostgreSQL and we want it installed. So what this is gonna do is it's going to install and make sure that PostgreSQL is installed on whatever minion we tell it to install on. 
The great thing about Salt is they have gone into each of the most popular Linux distributions and actually knows how to run the proper install. So if you run this on Ubuntu, it's going to use apt-get. If you run it on Arch Linux, it's going to use Pacman and so on and so forth. So all you have to do is say, hey, I want this package installed and Salt takes care of the rest. Next thing we want to do is since Postgres is going to be a service, we want to say, hey, there's a service. The name of this service is PostgreSQL. Sometimes when you install packages, they'll have multiple services that you'll run. So you want to specify the name of the service. You'll want to specify that you want it running. And then you're going to say, hey, we want it enabled, enabled set to true, which means that every time you turn on the server, it's going to make sure the process is running. So this is a configuration thing that Salt will set for you. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure the PostgreSQL client package is installed. And this shows you another way to ins install a package. You can do package.installed. This is convenient if you just have a whole list of things that you want installed and it slims it down so you don't have to build it up like you did with the Postgres. And that's really all you need to do to install packages and get a service running. In the next video, we're going to actually expand on this as we build out our system. But to start, this is just enough to get you started and get you pointed in the right direction. So we have all of this ready to go. So let's actually see about installing Postgre on Web01. What we do is we just do a sudo salt. We tell it Web01. And then we do state.highState. The high state is the command that runs that makes sure that the server is in the exact same configuration setup that we have configured it to be. If anything is off, it will automatically adjust it. So if you go in there and make some custom configuration changes on the server itself and you haven't replicated those into your salt state, when you run the high state, it will set those back. I have some very intimate experience with that in the last couple of weeks. So generally, you'll actually get an output of everything that happened and was changed. But fortunately, it didn't show you this time so that we could bring up another point. What happens is sometimes a connection will get lost or something whenever it's trying to run the high state. And so you'll get dropped back into the next line without seeing any output. That does not mean that nothing is happening or that it failed. In fact, if we we'll actually go and look at Web01 and we try to see if there's a Postgres service running, we get an unrecognized service error. If we'll do a PS and grep for Postgres, PostgreSQL, we'll see that we're doing an apt get and it's installing uh, PostgreSQL. So it's still running and still going even though it showed that and looked like nothing was actually happening just a second ago. What's happening is the salt client or the salt minion is getting all of the configuration information and pulling it down to its server, compiling it together and executing it on its own outside of the master. This is very convenient because if you're trying to run salt scripts on 100 servers at one time, if it had to do everything on the master, you'd be there for a while. So now that we've actually waited a little bit, if we go ahead and try to get our status again, we see that it is online. And then if we try to run psql, it says, hey, there's no role Ubuntu, and so it actually errors out, which means psql is on the computer which means psql or the postgres client package was actually installed and that's it for this video i think that covers all of the basics that you need to know to actually get started and start experimenting i highly recommend you experiment and really start trying to work around trying to figure things out this is just enough of the basics that you can experiment and goof around so with that, please give Salt a try, experiment with it, and join us next time for how to do pillars with Salt. We'll get into doing custom configuration with it and more into installing packages.